what's going on mentees the uncanny omar here from near mint condition and today i'm gonna wrap up your week this friday with an advanced look at conan chronicles epic collection return to samaria and man wolf the complete collection from marvel so please stay tuned Let's take a look at the Conan Chronicles Epic Collections first. Um, before I do get started, I do want to say a thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies. And here is a quick word from our sponsor where you can get these books. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Okay, so here is the Return to Samaria Conan Chronicles Epic Collection. This is Volume 3 of the Epic Collection, collecting years from 2007 and 2009. Now, there's two important things to mention about this. Number one is that this is the collection from the Dark Horse years, when Dark Horse owned the rights to Conan. And number two is that this is one of the few collections from the Epic line that it's collected in chronological order. So we already have a Volume 1 and 2. This stuff was previously collected in the Colossal Conan omnibuses that are long out of print, uh, and Conan the Sumerian Colossal Conan omnibus. So this collects issues 40 through 50 of that series, and then which ends the Kurt Busiek run. By then, he's joined by Timothy Truman. He's the co-writer on the book, and Paul Lee is the illustrator. And then Timothy Truman starts this other series called Conan the Sumerian. He is joined by... Kerry Nord. Now, Kerry Nord's been drawing comic books for a long time. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, that he is a graduate of the Joe Kubert Art School. I, I want to say just because of his art style. But I could be wrong. You can see how nice this lays over when we're opening it up in the middle. Let's look at some of the artwork and then we'll look at some of the extras. The book retails, like all the other epics, for $39.99. And let's see what else. And it has right around 496 pages. So just about 500 pages. This is the cover to the Colossal Conan that they used when it was at Dark Horse. And also, oh, that's right. It collects the issue zero of the Sumerian. Just a little bit more of the artwork. Now, one more thing I did not mention is that this and Man Wolf are both going to be released on October 2nd at retailers, uh, comic book stores, and places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, and then a couple of weeks later at places like Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Now here is an introduction and an afterword by Timothy Truman. Here is Greg Ruth's Conan sketchbook. I love looking at this stuff from behind the scenes. We got quite a bit of pages of extras back here. It's like character studies and armor and things like that. And then a forward that was in the original Conan Volume 6. By Mark Finn. Okay, so they collect all the forwards. That's really cool. I didn't know this is the first epic that I've gotten. And then this is sketches by Thomas Giorello. And introductions by Kurt Busiek, who was the head writer on Conan when it revamped at Dark Horse for a long time. Now, I know some of you all... Oh, this beautiful cover by Joe Kubert. Some of you all have been asking me, what are the chances of Marvel reprinting the Colossal Conans? I I don't... I mean, honestly, I don't think they will. I think they will just stick to the epics, but that's just me. I don't I don't speak for them, uh, mainly because they were owned by another company, The those, ish, those Omni, Omnis. And I don't think that they have done that yet. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they've done Omnis that another company has produced. But I could be wrong. Now we're going to look at the Man Wolf Complete Collection. So it doesn't have a volume here on the spine. Here's the spine. I really like that these Complete Collections... Uh, I know I'm OCD about some spines, but I like the different colors that they have on Complete Collections. 
Here's the back of the book. It's one of those books that I like to call a non-epic epic because it's the size of one. It's the price of one. It's $39.99. Um, now, the only thing I have to say negative about the back here, I like the color choice, but this right here, this text, is a little hard to read. It's like a red on burgundy. My brother, who's the artist of the family, would kill me if I got that color wrong. So it's a little hard to read. And here it is. Here's all the other complete collections, the Tomb of Dracula stuff that's going on. And it is the story of astronaut John Jameson. This is spoilers of a story that's over 35 years old. But this is the son of Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson, who was an astronaut and became transformed into the man-wolf when he finds a strange red gemstone in, on the moon. Um, now, this collects, like, pretty much all the appearances of that character earlier on. Uh, so it has Amazing Spider-Man 124 to 125, which was in the fourth omnibus. It also has Amazing Spider-Man 188 through 190, Giant Size Superheroes number one, Creatures on the Loose 30 through 37, uh, Marvel Premiere 45 through 47, Marvel Team Up 36 through 37, Savage She-Hulk 13 through 14, which is not going to be part of that omnibus that's coming out by John Byrne, and the Peter Parker The Spectacular Spider-Man Annual number three. Most of the stuff in this collection was written by Jerry Conway, Marf Wolfman, Doug Moench, Tony Isabella, and then drawn by Ross Andrew, Keith Pollard. Uh, there is a little bit of John Byrne in here, and also Gil Kane. So there's a lot of great talent in these books. Uh, I love when he goes on his own adventures and becomes this warrior type of character. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't read these, but they're pretty unique. And this is the only collection that I've seen with those stories in them. So if you want to know who the character of Man Wolf was, this is the collection for you. I mean, it's got all his appearances, um, including some, like I said, from the 80s She-Hulk run here. This particular book is right around 408 pages. As you saw... Uh, as I was flipping through here, it's got some extras within those pages, but let's look at the back here. Here's the official handbook of the Marvel Universe profile artwork here by George Perez. Uh, some house ads. And then some Marvel Tales reprints. So it looks like all the extras are in the within the pages. And here are some other collected editions like the Monster of Frankenstein, Werewolf by Night, who has had an omnibus and... The monster of Frankenstein was not, none of those stories were collected in that monster's omnibus, just as a heads up. But this is what you're going to get. And you can see some of this gorgeous artwork. Man, that is awesome. This storyline alone here within these pages of the Marvel premiere book are alone, I think, worth it. And that was the contents of each of the books. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking these books up or if any of them pique your interest. I'd love to know who's picking those up. And what do you think? Do you think Marvel will ever release the Dark Horse stuff in Omnibus Edition? Or if they're just going to keep it in these epic collections? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't yet and the notifications button. Check us out on Patreon if you enjoy the contents of this channel. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.